Hi everyone, Lisa Soames Peck from Spellbound Miniatures here and welcome to our medieval dresser tutorial. This week, as you can see, the Cricut Maker meets the Elegoo Mars 3D printer. We've used our Mars 2 Pro to 3D print in resin some knobs for this medieval dresser. I had ordered some online and when they arrived they were too small, so it was a bit of fun to actually recreate our own. And I've simply painted them black and used a bronze treatment to make them look aged. So let's quickly head over to Design Space and I'll show you an option with this file. Okay, so here we are in Design Space. We've got the SVG file on the canvas. Always check that your green inch square does indeed measure an inch by inch. Um, this is the top of the dresser we're looking at. The most of the file is in brown 2mm Cricut chipboard um, and we've got some elements in craft board. They're only coloured red and brown here because that's on the key that we use in our SVG files. You'll see a PDF file called Getting You Started and that explains what the different colours mean. So on the back of the dresser, this is where the shelves will be, you could have the plain brown chipboard not craft board um, but you also could have this uh, element here which is craft board and debossed so if the whole file is grouped when it comes in so ungroup it and then when you click on these lines you'll see over here in the layers panel it says basic cut so we don't want to cut those we want to deboss them you could also draw them on um, and you could score them on but we've got the debossing tool so we'll use that and then you select both the debossed lines and the back piece of craft board and attach them and that me means the machine will know to deboss the lines first and then cut the actual shape from the craft board you could also click on the lines and then if you've got a computer keyboard press shift while you click on the back piece and that selects the two pieces together and then you'll attach you'll also need to look at the two pieces here these lines also need to be drawn on because these are guidelines to place the middle section for the drawers it makes it much easier so again select them go up to pen I do the same down there and then you can just select shift and select the piece behind it and attach them don't worry that they disappear the machine knows to draw it always does the debossing or drawing or scoring or foiling first and then cuts the shape and you can also again just oh not do that drag a box around if you do something like that just do undo and it puts it where, where it should be so we'll shift and select I think is safer there and attach and then the same for the labeled pieces if you want to label them select the label go up and click pen and then select both pieces and attach and again it looks like it's disappeared but it's still there um, that will draw the label on the piece for you and you've also got two other bits of craft board here and here they're the insert panels for the door if you didn't want those and you wanted a plain back for your door you could just um, duplicate this piece by control c and control d Imagine we've duplicated that. I think Design Space is playing up today. You can always go to Contour and then all you do is you hide the contour. So then it fills the piece in. So you'd cut two of those and then cut two with the arch shape in and stick one behind the other. So uh, that's all we need to do in this file. Um, and then you'd click Make It. So let's get back over to the bench and we're going to make the top of the dresser first. 
So here's the piece that we debossed and you're going to glue it and press it straight onto the back piece if you're using the faux uh, wood panel effect. Press them down while they dry and then you're going to get the two side pieces. They get glued on the outside edge of the back piece so put the glue along the edge of the back piece and bring the side pieces up to it keep it laying down and it makes makes it all level you want to make sure the top and the bottom of the side piece is it, the exact same sort of height and level as the back piece and then i like to use you could use a magnetic gluing jig um, you can use steel bench blocks just to help push the edges together and make sure that they're nice and square. Next, get the three shelves. You can cut as many of these as you like, but to take the top one, and that actually creates the top of the um, dresser piece there. And then what you want to do, glue that in, is take the remaining two and decide if you want one shelf in the middle or if you want two shelves in your dresser. The only thing to bear in mind is what do you actually want to display on this dresser. So have a play around with the pieces that you know are going on there if you've got them. Use them to help you decide how high you want your shelves but also bear in mind the gap at the top is going to have the fancy trim on if you're using that you don't have to but if you are going to put the trim on that'll reduce the height of your top shelf too so glue your shelves in place and glue the trim on and then that is the top piece done so you can set that to one side and we'll start work on the bottom part of the dresser which you could also use on its own as a sideboard and you don't even need the top piece so we've got two pieces marked T, they're the top of the dresser, glue and layer them together and press them while they dry. Next, we've got the two pieces with the vertical lines on and one has got B for base on. We forgot to change this from a cut to a draw line so we actually tried to cut B for base. Hopefully you remember to change it to draw. Um, and we're going to be focusing on the larger of the two pieces. So that's not the one with B for base on. It's the back of the dresser, which is the taller piece. And we're going to get the two side pieces. And these are just marked with S. They're going to go on the outside edge of this back piece. So we'll be putting glue down the outside edges of the back. And make sure you've got this S side and not IS which is the inner side piece put those to one side get the S for side piece and that will glue onto the outside edge of the back piece as we did with the top of the dresser it's always easy to do this laying down on the on a mat on the bench and then use a gluing jig or square edge blocks to push the pieces into the side and hold them upright make sure you've got a nice 90 degree angle whilst it dries. We then take the piece with B for base on the bottom and we're going to glue the top onto the base and it sits onto the base not around the edges so we'll put glue along the bottom of the three pieces put them onto the base and then I like to turn the whole thing upside down and put some weights on it and just let that set up to one side um, and dry. The next thing to do is get the pieces marked SS, which is the shelf sides, and SH for shelf. And you can see we've got drawn the lines on these pieces too. The shelf will fit onto the side shelf, and we don't want to sort of be able to see the drawn line. We actually want to fit the shelf so that the bottom of the shelf just covers the line and you just can't see it. And SS goes at the bottom of this piece. So you want to make SS on the bottom and then the shelf fits down over that line. Make sure it's perpendicular. Hold it there for a while whilst the glue goes off and then we'll do the same 
with the second shelf and you'll always use the grids on the mat as if you want to make sure that they're um, square as well, the corners. Glue the second shelf on exactly the same so it covers the line with the SS at the bottom. This really makes a difference when you're fitting the drawers. Sort of make this as square as you can and let that set up. And then go and find the two pieces with IS for inside side on them and they're going to go on the outside of the sides which just had s on so or the ss wasn't it for shelf side there's a lot of sides in here so glue those on and you could glue them on before you put the shelves in that doesn't really matter which way just make sure they're nice and flat and level and this actually gives something for the door to shut on. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to pull the drawer out and have the door shutting and opening at the same time. That's why it's double thickness. So uh, glue that on so it looks like that and let that dry. And then this is just something I do to pass the time while I'm waiting for glue to dry. I like to balance things on and see how strong it is. I don't recommend it because one little millimetre either way and it'll all fall down. The next thing we're going to do is glue the door panels onto the door frames whether you've got the craft board version or the plain version that's up to you and press those while they dry then we're going to get our back and base assembly go and get the shelf assembly and we're going to glue this into the back and base assembly and we can see where those black lines are that we drew before we're going to make sure that this shelf assembly covers those lines too and with the double layer of the inside um, side and the shelf sides the black line should fit exactly on the outside edge and you shouldn't really be able to see it so glue that in place and make sure the SS is at the bottom again of the shelf supports and then it's time to put the top on so this just fits on the top but flush with the back so it's easier again to lay the whole thing down onto your mat put the glue along all the top edges of, of the base piece here the base and the back and then slide the top onto the base it's flush at the back and you want an equal overhang on the right and the left and then it should overhang at the front by a couple of millimeters and then to make sure that it's sort of evenly pressed down all round, I like to put my weights on top and then leave it to dry for a good while. So next we get the feet and the sides go inside of the front and back pieces. And we're going to lift the side up and put glue on the edge of the side piece and butt that up to the inside of the back piece. The, the front and back are interchangeable, so we, it doesn't matter which one, but just make sure that the side goes onto the inside and it's good again to keep them onto the mat here so that the top and bottom are level and we don't end up with wonky feet. And we're gonna do that on both sides and then glue the front onto the end of the sides so that it's equally square and then use the grid on your mat if you want to make sure that it's not kind of at a slight diagonal and just let that set up and dry too. This is what it should look like from the side. You can see the front and back there and they're all nicely level with each other. And then we're going to take the sort of sideboard part of the dresser now and then we're actually going to turn it upside down and you can see which way up it is because the top is two layers thick the bottom is only one layer thick so we've got the top down on the bench and then the thinner base layer is at the top and then we're going to get our dry foot assembly now and bring it over onto the base and we're going to put glue around the top edges of the foot assembly turn it over and glue it onto the base and it's flush with all the edges 
I grab a spare piece of chipboard, put it on the long straight edges here and put a weight on top and that helps to keep the pressure on so there are no gaps while the foot assembly dries. And last but not least we create the drawers. We have the drawer base here, two sides, a back and a front. We glue the back onto the base and it goes from one side to the other. So we put glue on the bottom edge of the back, put it onto the base at right angles. It will only fit one way. The, the drawer base is wider than it is deep. So make sure you have measured that and it, the back kind of lines up with both side edges. The sides fit on to the drawer base and up to the drawer back. You'll see that they'll fit in the gap there. You do both sides. And so the front edge should be flush. The sides and the base should be exactly the same level. So the front then glues onto the front and covers up both the side pieces and the base so that when the drawers are in place in the dresser, you just see a sort of fully, um, a full piece at the front with no edges. We need to do this three times. Of course, if you don't want to make the drawers, you could just have the open shelves and put things on those too. So now we go to our doors, turn them over so that the back is facing upright. And we're going to, um, I'm using the sort of ribbon and hinge method here, or tape. We're going to put the glue down one edge of the back piece. I'll do one at a time here. So we'll put the glue on one edge, only lightly because I'm using masking tape. Um, and it works quite well so far. So just a general masking tape. You could use ribbon if you can get a nice thin ribbon. And then we're going to get a piece of masking tape no higher than the door. And I like to have it just slightly shorter than the height of the door. Put the base on end so you've got one end facing upwards and then bring your door in with the masking tape with the sticky side facing up into that gap and line the door up exactly with the edge of the base and then just run your finger down and press the masking tape on the inside so that it kind of holds the door flush. Press it with your finger and then we've got the extra um, inner side pieces that have got IS on them too. We put that at an angle and we can glue that into and over the masking tape so it holds the masking tape in place um, and creates again a ledge on the inside for the door to shut against and then press that down as best as you can on the inside and your door will shut nice and evenly and kind of in an equidistant gap from the outside edge to the drawers. You can also use uh, metal hinges, put them on in the same way and then put your inside edge in to cover up the hinges um, and it will fill the gap that's left by the hinge there underneath. So there we have the finished dresser without the drawers in. Um, glue the top on, stain them. I used a wood stain and a walnut colour. Uh, put the drawers in, put on the handles that you like, and it's ready to go. I did use a coat of matte varnish over the top of the stain. I like that, it adds a nice lustre. And you can see the faux wood panelling at the back there. Um, I do think that adds a nice detail. I hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you for joining me today, and I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.